Here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, realtor here, Fadi Kudair, local realtor with Ottawa Sutton. And today we have with us Patrick Nicastro from La Bottega, one of the iconic stores in Ottawa that's been around for quite some time. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Fadi. It's a pleasure to, to actually have you on the show. We've been trying to kind of put this together for the last little bit. And Patrick just happens to be the third Italian in a row on the podcast. And you'll notice that with the next little episodes coming out. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So tell me a little bit more about uh, La Bottega. How long you guys been in business? What is it all about? First of all, the name is Pasquale, not Patrick. That's okay. Pasquale. Pasquale is my real name. Everybody goes, Love it. Everybody goes by Pat. Once in a while, I get a Patrick, but it's it's Pat or Pasquale. Pasquale. Love it. <laughs> See, you learn something new every day. Exactly. How long I've been in business? I opened La Bottega in 1995. So it's going to be our 30th year. Wow. Year. Yeah, 30 years in business. It's definitely an icon in the market. It's like when I used to work back in the day at Rideau, that was my lunch. Yeah. Every day, sometimes twice a day, yeah. kind of put some weight on. Yeah, you know, yeah, the good yeah, Italian yeah, yeah. food, you can't and go sometimes wrong Sometimes you that. need those carbs, yeah. Oh yeah, carbon it up, got some weight, put on some weight and then kind of, you know. I still, You still need the carbs. I mean, we got a little bit of everything. I'll tell you now what we've, we've done. But uh, yeah, since 95 it's basically we opened as a little deli it was about half the size and big part of our business was the sandwich and the lunch crowd and we just got a real good name with our italian sandwiches we started pumping them out it became big you know they were a good value priced sandwich oh yeah i mean when we opened they were like five bucks now they're under ten dollars still but uh it's still a good price i mean where can you get a you know a good size meal for under ten bucks good and it's size a- meal and then also you walk out with the with the nice mango juice and a yeah. few other things next thing you know you're spending 25 bucks but yeah it's, exactly it's fantastic yeah, yeah most people don't walk in and grab a basket by the time they leave they need a, a grocery basket because they're filling 100%. their card up. so tell me a little bit more about how did it come to fruition for you guys to open up a store my family's been in this business i'm actually the fifth generation so we've been doing this all our lives i i was born into this business i basically worked for my dad who had uh, grocery stores since I was 12. By 16, I was managing one of the stores. Then when I was in university, I was I was graduating with commerce degree. Yeah. La Bottega was actually my fourth year business project. It was a marketing business class and, and I developed this La Bottega, this, this Italian store for downtown. So where does the name La Bottega come from? So La Bottega means the boutique, the shop, the boutique. It's a very common word in Italy. If you say you're going to the little grocery store, you go, I'm going to the Bottega. Even in Spanish, Bodega, same idea. Mm-hmm. So it's just a little play on that. So it's basically Nicastro's boutique so la bottega nicastro that's what it means nicastro's boutique fantastic so when you first started like back in 95 describe to me the business and how you guys kind of got it off the ground okay so you know we had a bit of the family business behind us i was already doing something similar to this but my idea was just to make it a little more modern my parents store my dad's and his brother's shop was more targeted towards immigrants italian immigrants yeah so at that time there was a huge and there's still a big part of the business but most of their customers were immigrants my idea was to start bring a little more flair you know i was traveling you're seeing italian food you're seeing these little cool food shops all around the world i just wanted to make it a little more a little more exciting and bring Italian food to just another level. Also to provide some some takeout and some restaurant food and yeah. catering. And this is stuff we didn't really do at my dad's place. So that was our plan downtown. When it started, that's basically what it was. It was half the size. It was just a little a little one step above, I'd say. I mean, and, and just a little more fancier, but still with that old school flair. No, for sure. And you guys chose a very amazing location. Like one of the biggest things that we talk about in real estate is location, location, location. Being in the market right on George Street. What does that mean to your business? So, I'll tell you a story. When I went there 30 years ago, I mean, the, I've seen the market go through some uh, ups and downs, but 30 years ago, every place on the street was struggling and closing. Yeah. So we love that building because that building was actually an Italian grocery store since 1923. Oh, wow. Bit of history. Yeah. Sure. So it was an Italian family that owned it and they basically had a store. It looked like an antique store, but when we went there, it was very old and the, uh, the Sasso family that had it basically was still there. They wanted a grocery store there. They wanted to keep that tradition. So they, they actually approached us and said, listen, we're thinking of retiring. What do you think about this spot? And uh, like I said, I was in university. I'm, I said, let me, you know, let me, let us think about it. We did our fourth year business project and we did some numbers and, and some statistics and it, 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 it seemed like a good idea at the time. Mm-hmm. So we took a bit of risk in that location because uh, at the time there was some some issues. The economy wasn't the best, but you know what? From day one, it was a hit. So in 1995, we started and we opened to a hit and it was busy right away. So I'm lucky and I'm fortunate. We grew every year. From 1995, every year was busier and busier. 
our staff grew and we just had to basically always trying to keep up. Yeah. Now, one thing that I really enjoyed about going to the store back in, and this, what we're talking about like the 2007, 2008 kind of time frame was always that consistency. And still to this day, the consistency, when you go in, the sandwich is made the same way. The cut is made the same way. The, just tell me a little bit more about how you instilled that in the staff. Yeah, I mean, that's one of our big, funny you say that, because that's a business philosophy that I tell my staff. It's every day, be consistent, guys. The customer wants to come. They don't want one product one day, another product another day. Mm -hmm. uh, keep the quality consistent and uh, give the customer a value. It's important, especially now. So we, we didn't. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Even yeah. with, with our sandwiches, basically it's the same menu from day one. The same, uh, you pick your meats, you pick your cheeses and your toppings and we do it for you. And uh, the customer loves that it's, it's there, easy. You line up. It's fast. We get you in. You know, sometimes those lineups look a little long, but everybody that's in there says, wow, that went very fast. Oh, yeah. I've, I've never been in the lineup more than 10 minutes. Yeah, like, it to goes. Me, it moves. Especially when you have a very limited time frame for your lunch, especially yeah. if you work downtown, like a lot of people do. You know, you don't have more than 45 minute lunch. Yeah. Um, you're able to get in, get out, and still enjoy your lunch. Yeah. And then that, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's the key for us. And 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 being consistent, even the staff and, and our deli, like our big business is really, you know, we talk about the sandwiches a lot, but our real business is the is the delicatessen, the cheese department. Uh, you know, that we some of our staff has been there since day one. Mm -hmm. That's that's 29 years, you know, and uh and that's a consistency that we're happy about. Our little restaurant, which is a different part, is you know, that goes through some uh, changes, you know, different chefs come in and they bring a different little concept it's a 25 seat little cafe yeah and uh that's where we play with the with the dishes a little more and we uh we introduce some new stuff and and you know we get a little more modern or or old school but in the end it's uh consistent food brands food products you know you're gonna come to my shop you know you're gonna get the best olive oil the best pastas the best cheeses if it's italian we're gonna have it and you're always gonna find it oh, you're not man. gonna be disappointed you're not gonna go there one week and say i, I can't find an olive oil i can't find a pasta. no no you go there and you're gonna consistently find what you here. need for italian cooking i'm and sitting italian here food. and my mouth is like watering just thinking of all of those uh yeah you know the the, the olive oil and the, the you know olives and all of that stuff like that yeah. just so i mean lebanon is probably it's similar, and I hear that from a, a lot of people, but, uh, you know, we go every year to Italy. We go see the olives. We go see the olive trees. We have family there that still take care of it. So that's something we've started doing in the last 10 years. We started importing a lot of our own products, so mm -hmm. stuff back from the home country. So we bring our own olive oil now, our own pasta, uh, our own uh, peppers and spreads and olives uh, in jars. And these are things that are done the way our family used to do it back home. So we're bringing those products directly. And what that does for us is we, we skip the middleman. Yeah. So you come to our store, you're, you're not, you know, the, people are sometimes surprised. They're saying the prices are, are better than the chain stores. The reason we do that is because we bring in a lot of stuff direct. And, uh, and after, it's very authentic too. Like it's not, you know, it's like the real Italian food. It's the know? real deal. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to fool around. If you, you, you want an authentic Italian cheese, you know, fresh, fresh cheeses are flown in every week. They're flown in directly from Italy. That's it's a, it's a big process, but we get it done every week. The fresh cheese comes in. You know you're getting it fresh. Mm. The olive oil. There's no mixing. There's no blending. We know what we're getting. This is our family in Italy that's putting it in the bottle yeah. for us. Yeah, it's being shipped here and it's sold to the, our customers directly. That's it. So, so what do you would if you were to kind of put your you know fingers on it? What would be the the biggest item on the menu that got you guys the most success? over the years. Number one selling cheese and we sell a lot of it. I, I'm going to safely say I think we sell more than anybody in the city is Parmigiano. Of course. Which is the big Italian Parmesan. And we we cut a form of that a day. Like that's a 30, 40 kilo form. Mm -hmm. Every day we basically cut one form and sell a form of that. And it's a huge product. The beauty is we know the producers. We know which who we're buying that cheese from. We go to Italy, we meet them, make deals, we bring it in ourselves. Yeah. The prosciutto, you know, Parmigiano prosciutto, same thing. Now we have our own brand of prosciutto. We know the producer in Italy, in Parma. We've selected which one, nice. and now we're bringing it in ourselves. So would it be <clears> safe <throat> for you to say, hey, I know the cow that just produced that? <laughs> maybe not the cow, but we know where the cow came from and, uh, nice. you know, the lands that maybe it had it ate fantastic, from. So, yeah. Fantastic. And over the years, I mean, you've, you've been in business for 29 years. 
29 years is a long time in business, specifically speaking when it comes to retail. We all know retail is one of those up and down, up and down, you know, the location makes a difference, the area makes a difference. Tell me a little bit more about the challenges that you guys faced over the years. It's still a, it's still a struggle. Like, you know, people come in and say and and see our, our operation and it's a pretty big operation and they, we make it look easy. But believe me, it's not easy. Retail, it, it's up and down. And, and now what we're seeing is, uh, you know, location. Sometimes it's a great location. Sometimes it's not a great location. Mm-hmm. So we have to uh, we have to constantly market market our business. We don't stop. We hustle. We're constantly on the ball, trying to bring in new customers yeah. and remind our old customers why what we do and what we do best. Yeah, we're always looking for other locations. You know, now we have three cafes across the st- city. We're 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 think you know we still we're open to expansion. So if we found another grocery store location, we'd be we'd be interested in that. Every location comes with its challenges. Downtown, you know, when downtown was downtown pre-COVID, it, it was, was incredible. It was yeah. a spot because there was tons of people already there. Now we have to bring in some more people downtown, and yeah. we're, you know, what we've done is we've had to to look at other other venues, uh, other uh, other avenues in our business to attract sales. So what we now we we are a big part of our business is catering. So we go to you, we bring the catering to you, we, we do offices, we do parties, we do events. It's become a huge part of our business. We got two trucks on the road every day. Nice. And we deliver, we, you know, we set up. Catering is a big part. Uh, we're online. We're just revamping our site right now. We're going to go across Canada with our products. Uh, we've realized there's a lot of so products. So that's more on the, the retail side of it. That's the retail side because there's products now, you know, location is important, but the world is your customer too. So 100%. what we do is now we're starting to ship products all, all over. And uh, we've we've mastered it, I think, locally, shipping locally. And now we want to go across Canada. So we're, we're working on a, a new site right now. And, and that'll be, uh, you can get our Nicastro products anywhere. And we're seeing people are looking for it. They're asking us. We get emails every day. We... We ship out to people all kinds of all kinds of products, so uh, we're excited about that. So location is important, but it can't you know it's not always the main part of our business. We have to look for other ways, and we're always uh, we're always looking at other other mm-hmm. avenues. Yeah, and just on the uh, you know the catering side of it, what sort of limitations do you have within the city as far as where you guys go? So basically, in Ottawa, we'll go anywhere. We'll go anywhere. We've catered weddings. We do the city of Ottawa Christmas party like. Three four years in a row now, and that's thousand five hundred people. Nice. We did the full catering. We'll do a sandwich platter for a luncheon for your office, no problem. You know, you can pick up, you can deliver. So we have delivery. Uh, everything is, you know, we have a good catering team now. Like I said, there's two trucks on the road. We have a full team, uh, chefs, and it's it's quite intriguing. Uh, our main thing is our sandwich platters. People love them. They're easy. You can grab them. Cannolis, desserts. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Charcuterie is so popular now. Everybody loves the charcuterie boards, you know, and if you want to make it yourself, you come to our shop. We'll sell you all the ingredients. If you want us to do it, we can do it for you too. And that's such an easy food at a party, at an event. It's the hit. Yeah. Yeah. Normally when you go to the party, the charcuterie board is where the party's at. It's where all the talking happens or all the uh, mingling really. And with a glass of wine, it just kind of puts it over the edge. Yeah. Just going back to, again, the business and you've been there for 29 years. Obviously, it didn't come from nothing. Over the last 29 years and you know, with the ups and downs, tell me about one lesson that you learned the most. Well, I'm still learning after 29 years. I thought I had figured this out. What a humble man. Yeah, I, I am still learning. You know, you're hearing about COVID all the time and that really changed everything for us and, and really made us open our minds again and and ha- basically go back to square one and, and figure out what you know, if we want to stay in business and we want to keep this this going, you, you have to just reinvent yourself. And I mean, it sounds like we're still doing the same thing every day, but we're reinventing ourselves every day. Yeah. What I, what the biggest thing I say is you got to go to work. Got to like, go to work. You know, change is always the most constant I find in any business. Yeah. Right. If you if you're able to change and change quickly, and adapt, you grow. Right. And if you don't, then. Right. Our customers have changed oh, since we started. A lot of them were Italians, Italian first and second generations. Now we're, we're, our customers are, are those people's children. You know, mm-hmm. we've seen it. We've seen customers come in as, as, as teenagers, as you, when you worked at the Rito Center, and now you have a family and then you have kids yeah. and then you bring your kids and oh, yeah. your kids my, my become customers. My daughter actually was there yeah. uh, a couple of months ago and she like just took a screenshot or a, like a photo and said, Hey, look, it's your favorite store. Yeah. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of that. We're we're hiring our kids' friends. We're hiring our our kids' grandchildren now. So 
it's been uh it's been exciting yeah it's you have to you have to reinvent yourself and adapt and and you know social media changed it the marketing really you know that wasn't around before and you know but i we we thrive on social media we love it it's a way to bring our brand out to so many people and is it is it free yeah it's 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 it's, it's it, it's not free, but it's it's a lot more less expensive getting your brand out there and getting your message out daily. Time consuming for sure, but it is not time free. consuming, but it's worth it at every point. I mean, I I think if you're not on the social media bandwagon and growing your 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 base, uh, you're you're in trouble because that's the new generation, and they're that's how you're getting customers. And you know, we we see it now. We we put a product on on Instagram and promote it, and that product all of a sudden will sell hundreds of units that day. Yeah. Where before it was hard, you had to tell the customer when they came in and talk about it, and you know, and we've got quite a, a great following. We're so we're we're grateful for that. We got a, a nice following, so we enjoy uh, social media. We enjoy talking. We have fun with it. You know, we do. We'll we'll, we'll talk to people. We'll interview. We'll take pictures of guests. Uh, we'll we'll introduce new products. There's so many things you can do, and if your business is not taking advantage of that, you're you're gonna fall behind. Hundred percent. Yeah. The one biggest thing that I, I kind of gathered from this is adaptability and the ability to change is really what got you guys continually being in business. Right. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say. So now I, I had mentioned earlier, we have these coffee shops, these cafes. So we have three. One is in Gatineau. One is in Pinecrest Shopping Center in the Ikea Mall. Mm -hmm. And uh, one is at the airport now. So uh, they're sandwich shops and they're cafes. And these are little less, not as big as the store, not yeah. as uh, prominent. It's not a grocery store. They're just cafes because we saw our cafes taking off and we saw people coming every day for coffee. We take coffee so serious at Bottega. That's one of our big things. We train our baristas. We make sure the coffee is authentic Italian. There's a lot of competition in that game, but we're happy to be an Italian, true Italian coffee shop. Our sandwiches... Uh, in the cafes, they're a little different. They're all signature. They're already, we've we've picked the sandwich uh, combinations for you. You know, they're nice. You In these coffee shops, we grill the sandwiches. We can't grill them at Bottega because it takes too much time. But at the coffee shop, you can get it grilled. You can sit there. You can have a beautiful Italian coffee, an Italian mm -hmm. soft drink. And uh, yeah, so those are, that's the thing, how we've adapted. And we've got our brand out there a little more. Uh, the airport, you know, that's a, that's a partnership with the Ottawa Airport. And it's it's been so successful. Where you know we're it, it's a great. Our local brand is there. They wanted a local a local company. They came to us yeah. and uh, we agreed. And it's it's great. We're selling a ton of sandwiches every day there, and the airport's doing a fantastic job at it. So we're happy. Yeah. So what are your biggest thoughts about somebody that's trying to start a business like this? And it doesn't have to be Italian, but like something authentic like this. What are your biggest thoughts and biggest sort of advices that you want to give them? The food business is tough. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is so hard. Um, you're competing with everybody. You're competing with the grocery store. You're competing with restaurants. You're competing with everybody. So the food business is, it's tough. If you have a knowledge and you have a passion for it, that's maybe the first thing. If you just want to get into it for the money, don't do it. Save your money. Don't open a cafe or restaurant. I'm being, I'm being sincere here, but if you have a passion and you're willing to put in the hours because it's not easy. Small rewards, but it is rewarding. And it's going to take you some time, but you can get there. And remain local and, and make sure you know your neighborhood, you know your customers, find out what they want. Yeah. I would recommend someone that's already in this business that understands it. Yeah. First, if you want to open a, you know, even a restaurant, a cafe, go in the industry for a bit. It seems so exciting. Everybody wants to open a restaurant. Everybody wants a, a coffee shop. Yeah, I just, I love it. They love the business, but there's a lot behind it. And the margins have, have changed. It's not as uh, easy as it used to be. Everything's changed. Everything's gone up. We all know we're all in the same boat. Housing industry, the thing, you know, every food product, it's no secret, has gone up so much. Mm -hmm. So you're working with less margin and it's uh, it's not as easy as it used to be. So just, just make sure and get ready to put in hours because, you know, you got to be there. No one's going to run yeah. the business like you are. Well, especially if you're trying to with the, with the margins being low and what have you, if you're trying to keep as much more as you could, probably the best way to do it is yeah, to you have to be there. work on it. Yeah, uh, It's either working on your business or somebody else is working on it. And if somebody else is working on it, you're not really, it's not your standards. It's not your, you know, and even if you train them, it's still not going to be the same. That's right. And no one's going to have the heart for you. Listen, they were, if they had your heart and your passion, they'd open their own place too. So 
just remember that. And, you know, you need a good staff, treat them well. And they're there for you. Like I said, we've had staff for so long. We're so lucky. We're so fortunate. They've helped us grow. It's so important. Uh, you have to be able to trust them. You know, we're, we're, we're a hundred staff now Yeah, between all the locations and it's, it's a, it's a big thing. And you know, it, it's, it's stressful because you're, I'm responsible for, for all these people. I was just going to ask you, how do you feel about being responsible for a hundred families? Yeah, it, it's challenging because, you know, sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not. And But you got to keep your staff working and you got to keep everything moving and you can't take anything for granted. What would you attribute some of the success as far as keeping those staff for that long? I mean, the nice thing about our, us is our business is family-based. It truly is. It's my partner, Rocco, my cousin, you know, my kids there my uncle is there my aunts are there my dad still comes to the shop every day so we have a good family core you know and they're the they're the ma so we'd like our staff to think they're part of that family mm -hmm. and that's what we try to do you know there's different you know we hire managers for certain departments we hire managers for certain shops and we try to train them and and you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and uh the funny thing is we remain friends with most of our staff and we stay in good contact and we try not to, you know, we try to keep a good relationship all the time. And you, you know, a lot of our, our new staff come from old staff that worked for us and said, you know, we understand a lot of our, our staff are people that are students. Uh, it's yeah. their part-time job. It's, you know, it's, it's a job in the middle of their careers and, and we get that, but uh, we want them to treat it like it's their business and, 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 and take care of it. And when we've been lucky and, and you've yeah. mentioned a few times, like you had second generation, um, have you had second generation people come and working for you? Like oh, as far of course. as yeah. their dad, their mom worked yep. for you. Now the kids are working for you. It's happened numerous times. Now. Oh wow. Yeah, this is, it's, you know, after 30 years, it's almost getting to third generation now. So yeah, it's in, I can't even believe I'm saying that, but yeah, yeah. We've had, uh, our, our staff's children work for us for sure. Yeah, and and extremely rewarding. To, yeah, to it is, and it's it it goes to show that you guys are again taking them as part of the family. You're treating them like they belong, and yeah. it's probably the reason why they're staying that long, and then kind of giving you their heart and soul into the business. Yeah, I mean, staff, the children now are a little different. Listen, I'm to blame. I have children. Maybe we don't. The work ethic has to be taught a little better. Uh, you know, my generation was a second generation Italians and we were, we, we were hustlers. We were all, we had to work. We didn't come from, uh, you know, from money and stuff. So we had to, we had to, we wanted to, to get there. The generation now, you know, I think they're a little more, I don't like using the word privileged, but titled maybe <laughs> titled and privileged. So maybe they don't need to work as much. And yeah. that's, that's a challenge we've seen. And, when I hire my friends, children, or, or, or even my relatives, I tell them, listen, there's no special treatment. I'm going to treat you like I treat everybody. And we try to instill, you know, we try to be a little hard on them because that's reality. And that's, that's going to take them to the next level. And I can't tell you how many times I've had staff come in and say to me, Pat, I thought you were, you were the, 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 the meanest boss and the hardest boss on me. And now that I'm in the workforce, I thank, they thank me. Or they have their own staff and they come back and I've, I can't, I've heard this so many times. They come back and say, thank you for being hard on us and, and teaching us work ethic because we are using it in the rest of our lives. And, mm -hmm. and we see it right away. And maybe that's uh, that's something I want to tell parents. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, no, I, I a, definitely, you know, it goes put some work ethic in your children because uh, it's going to yeah. help them. And, and, you know, when they get to the workforce, no one's looking out for them. Mom and dad aren't behind them. So. It's always like this, though. The hardest bosses are the ones that you remember forever. And you always come back and say, you know what? They really taught me a lesson. Mm -hmm. They weren't just because they were hard. Maybe they were a little bit of a, an a-hole, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. But they actually taught you a lesson. Yeah. I, I won't say a-hole, but maybe some have called me an a-hole. I don't yeah. know. You never know. <laughs> you <Yeah>. never know. <laughs> um, what are some of the nostalgic moments that you've had within the business in the last 29 years? I think for me, family... You know, I grew up in this business. I I got to work with my father. For me, that is uh, my my both my parents helped at the business, and my uncles and my aunts and my cousins and my my children. And you know, we get to you know it, that could be a struggle, but for me, those are the most beautiful moments. We get to travel to Italy together. We get to go to food shows. We get to taste stuff. We have uh, you know, I get to see my dad almost every day. Still, you know, he's retired, but he still comes in and. And uh, I don't take any of that for granted. You know, for me, it's beautiful. The generational thing and seeing people's kids and, and seeing what we've all built together. It's not only me, it's me and my family. 
and and seen what we've built and and seen people so excited about it and it it, it it's that for me that's the beautiful thing it's yeah. humbling uh you know we're we've 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 been in this business for generations and and then we're still carrying it and we're still doing it and uh you know you go you know the world is small now and you know you, we have people reach out to us from all over the world now and know our business and know our brand and uh, that's exciting. That's rewarding. And and for us, that's I think that's what keeps us going every day. And uh, yeah, I, I I love what I do. I love going to the store. I love seeing people. I love you know it's a busy place. There's always action happening. You never know what's gonna happen. Amazing. Every morning you go, it's stressful, but it's good because uh, you get to meet so many people and newcomers, and they come to this city and they they they've heard about La Bottega. And it's one of some people have told me it's the first place I came when I came to Canada. And for us, that's, that's, that's heartwarming. And we, we appreciate sure, that so much. Sure. And do you still get a lot of like newcomers, like new Italian comers to you Canada know, that Italians, specifically come there? Or? Italians, we're, we're starting to see a little slowdown. There's not too many coming in. We're, we're, the Arab population is growing. They've become a huge uh, part of our business and we're seeing it. Yeah. And we appreciate it. And uh, like we were joking earlier, the Arabs are they're taking over. So uh, we're bringing in some more, some more, yeah, some more products. And uh, but it's everybody. It, I mean, uh, yeah, we're seeing a lot of newcomers. Italians, yeah, we still see the Italians. We 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 the Italian embassies are big customers. All the embassies are big customers of ours. Um, you know, Parliament buildings. We 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 send orders there. We 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 really take care of everything, and uh, you know we had the the Swiss embassy needed something, and we we take care of them. We're it's basically European now. They need something, they call us, we get it for them. We have the relationships with suppliers, and uh, that's that's the beauty. Really, it's everybody. Italians is still at our heart, and you know I love to still see Italian grandmothers shopping in my store. I have a soft spot for that. Uh, growing up, they were our, our customers, and I've seen I've seen these basically these these grandmothers and mothers that were young ladies when they started and i was just a kid working and now their grandmothers and they're bringing their children are bringing them and it that, that's heartwarming and and even seeing people tell me about how my dad used, used to, to service help, yeah. them and and they they remember him when they were a kid and how my dad used to give them a little chocolate when they were a kid and i find myself doing the same little things and 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 yeah so I mean, the immigrant population for us is still important and they, uh, they want foods from back home. And even I'd say all Europeans now, you know, we kind of, we kind of, it, the world is small and Italian food is everybody has Italian food. So if you appreciate a good olive oil, it doesn't matter if it's from Lebanon, if it's from Italy, Spain, you know, you're going to get a good olive oil when you come to us, yep. you know, a good cheese, you know, it might not be that exact cheese you're getting back home, but we're going to have something from Europe that you're going to appreciate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, if you have to kind of pinpoint it, what sets you apart from a lot of other sort of Italian places out in the city? So, I mean, there's some great Italian places. We, uh, I, I'd say experience for us, you know, and, and we make it look easy. It's not, um, but experience. We have like suppliers that we've been dealing with now for 30 years. You know, we have uh, suppliers in Italy we've been dealing with for 30 years. So we do get a lot of competitive advantage that way. We know our products. We know what, what works, what doesn't work. We're not as scared. We're not scared to try new things and new products. And we're, you know, we're constantly going to those food shows. We're constantly seeing what the newest items coming out of Italy are. We work with a lot of chefs. Uh, our location is great because so many chefs from different restaurants and hotels and and government agencies come in to see us because they need products. And, you know, they ask us for something and, you know, the next week it's there, we'll have it for them. Wow. So we we're lucky that way. And our team has been around. Um, we have a great core team and they can basically answer any question. The knowledge we have between us, I don't think there's anyone in, in Ottawa or I'd maybe even say in, 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 you know, in Canada that has as much knowledge yeah. now as us. Well, especially like when you go, you said some of the staff have been there for as long as we've been You've open, been open yeah. right? Like yeah. 30 years with a hundred staffers. I'm going to say this probably close to like 600 years of experience. Like yeah, there is a if lot not more. Yeah, there you is know, a lot combined between yeah. everybody. But if you had to go back and do it all over again, what would you change? That's a good question. Maybe I'd work a little less. Yeah. You know, and I, I say you got to be there and you do, but you know, put your family first. Probably that, that's the only yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'd no regrets. And, 
No regrets. No, no. I still love going to work every day, but you know, put your family first. Don't forget that. You know, the business will be there tomorrow. You know, take that holiday. Nothing's going to happen when you come, when you come back, it's still going to be there. Take that time off when you take that time off. You know, I try to three weeks in Italy, a month in Italy every year. For me, that's so important. And, uh, I feel so refreshed and better when I get back. I, I have an energy and I think it actually helps us and it helps the business when, uh, your your staff takes some time off. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, definitely needed. You know, put family dates, first always. Yeah. You're grounding. You're grounding yourself by going back to the roots in yeah. a way. And if you want to be authentic and serve authentic Italian food, mm -hmm. it's good to refresh every now and then. Go yeah. back to basics. Yeah. You know, we do this in sales all the time. Whenever you're having a slump, you just go, okay, let's go back to basics. And that's the same way when you're taking time off and going back to the homeland is really just, that's your way of saying, yeah. I'm going to take some refreshment i'm gonna get back to basics yeah it's nice i get to go see the olive trees i get to go see some cheese factories and things that really make uh make what we do so important so mm. so where whereabouts from italy are you, your family is from we're calabria so we're south we're at the bottom of the boots the uh, fishermen's yeah fishermen uh we're people of the land Nice, you nice. know the northern Italians like to make fun of us a little bit, but big population from that area here in Canada. Yeah, actually, from our little town where we're from, I'd say there's more people in Ottawa than left in that town. Oh no way! You know, they all immigrated to Ottawa, and uh, yeah, it's. I think uh, I know a few people from Calabria, actually. Yeah, oh for sure. Yeah, in Ottawa, we're we're a pretty big, strong population. And when you go back for the folks watching, what are some of the amazing areas that you visit in Italy that? Everybody should at least visit once in their lifetime. Well, okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying this because I'm Italian, but if you haven't been to Italy, you have to go because it is truly incredible. Um, you have to go see the the main Rome, the Colosseum. You know, you have to see Venice. You have to see those canals. If not just for a day or two, you have to see these things. They're mind blowing. They're beautiful. And I mean, Canada is such a young country. And then you go back there and you see these structures that have been there for thousands and thousands of years. And you really understand why they understand and why, why they're so popular and mm -hmm. beautiful. Tuscany and just those, be those beautiful hills and the, and the trees and the, and the vegetation. And it's incredible. And understanding where the land... And then, uh, yeah, Calabria, where we're from, is a little less touristy. That's why I like it. But you have to go see those touristy places in Italy. You have to spend a few days in Rome and just and see all the great structures and, you know, the, the back to the Roman times. And If you have to pick top three in that area in Italy, where would be the top three of your choices? So me, I like an area called Reggio Emilia. So that's in, in, in uh, there's Modena, Modena in there. So balsamic vinegar, uh, Parmigiano comes from there. There's lots of good prosciutto from that area. And there's also uh, Ferrari and Maserati from that area. Nice. So I love that area. I try to go every time. Um, Rome, you have to see it. And as tacky as it sounds, I find I, I love Venice. I love the, the canals and I love seeing it. You know, after a few days, I'm good, but it is, it is incredible to see. And then I go to, to Calabria because that's where my heart is. But uh, you know, Italians, I'm not bragging, but we, we, we do things right, you know, and it's maybe because we've been doing it for so long. Yeah. You know, we, we got great food. I'm not going to say the best, but uh, okay, I'll say the best. Best food, <laughs> best cars, and best fashion. So for me, there's no more beautiful in the world than Italy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if someone is thinking about going for a trip, what's a fair amount of time that they should allocate for this? Minimum, minimum 10 days, you know, and stay as long as a month. You know, there's people that go for a month or two and then, you know, eat, pray, love, and they figure their life out, lives out. And yeah, 10 days is minimum, but, uh, you know, stay two, three weeks, enjoy yourself. There's so, I, I named a few places, but the Amalfi Coast is gorgeous. The beaches in Italy for me are, are breathtaking and, yeah. and beautiful. And then the food. The food is, is, you know, it's, it's, it's not expensive. It's, and it's so, all the food comes from that, those little areas. And it's made with love. It's made with love. It's, it's made in that area. Yeah. Nobody, no restaurants buying food from, from another country. They're buying the food from their area. It's all local. You know, the wine, the wines, the wines are incredible. You drink a wine just from that region and, you know, you're paying $10 a bottle and you're drinking a beautiful wine. It's incredible. 
these are the things we don't get here. You no, know? no. And then even if we do, that same bottle will probably be like a forty, fifty dollar oh, bottle yeah, easy. minimum. Easy. Yeah. If not top shelf. Yeah. A lot more than yeah, that. Yeah. Um uh, wanted to just go back to La Bottega, just kind of last little bit here. What are some of the plans for you guys for the next five years that you can share? You know, uh, yeah, I'll be honest. We have these cafes. Uh, they're growing. Uh, we'd like to open another, one more store, maybe in another another store in another area that uh, is a little more convenient than, than downtown. For We have a lot of customers. They want a big parking lot and they want. So we're looking for something like that, you know, and, and we'll see where it goes. You know, again, we're going to adapt. La Bottega will adapt, maybe a commissary kitchen, you know, stuff like that. But the, the, the downtown store is not going anywhere. We love it there. And for us, it's a jewel. So uh, yeah. we'll always have that base. And what the happens in the future, we'll see. 100%. And would you ever consider sort of collaboration with another brand or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, we've thought about it. We've, yeah, we've looked at all. I mean, the Ottawa airport is basically a collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, they've taken, oh, they're using our branding. Uh, we developed the, 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 the sandwiches, the menu. We supply them the food. And uh, they're basically, yeah, that's a collaboration with the Ottawa airport. And for us, it's worked fantastic. So fantastic. We, we always would. Patrick, it's been a pleasure. Really uh, appreciate you. being on the show. And definitely now all I could think about is going to La Bottega, pick up something <laughs> on the way home. <laughs> Perfect. With that being said, I'd love for you to just kind of leave the audience on one last thing about your business that maybe they don't know about. We're authentic Italian. And, you know, if you want to have something to eat, if you want to have something to drink, if you want to shop, you're going to find a lot there. I think people are surprised. They, they, you know, that, you know, there's still people in Ottawa that haven't been there. It looks small from the, from the front, but you walk in and it's a big store and yeah, come start, start just having a lunch and then see what we have and shop around. And yeah, I can tell you it's life changing. I've, <laughs> You know, I, I used to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner sometimes <laughs> yeah. at that store for a good three years or so. Good. Thank you so much, Patrick. Really appreciate you. you being on the show. Guys, if you like what you see, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more episodes like this. If you want to see more businesses around Ottawa, don't also forget to comment. Let us know about your experience at La Bottega. Thank you again. Appreciate it. <laughs>